In this training video, we'll go through the various settings and menu options on the 2250 and 2270 sound level meter. At the top of the screen, we can see the name of the template that we have open. We are currently using the template called sound level meter, which is the default template and also the most basic. Underneath the template name, we can see the file path and name of the current measurement. The current measurement is called Project 001, and it is located in the root folder of the internal disk on the meter. Below the file path, we can see the timer for the measurement. The LAF value is displayed on the top bar graph at all times, whether we are taking a measurement or not. Below that, we have all the different displayed parameters. To display a different parameter, we can simply click on the screen and select whatever parameter we would like displayed. The measurement mode is set to manual, which means that the measurement will start and stop when we manually press the start or stop button. We could also choose automatic, which means that the measurement will stop automatically after a defined amount of time. The preset time is the duration for the automatic measurement mode. Most 2250 and 2270 templates have different tabs at the bottom that let us switch between different views. For example, if we only want to display one parameter, we can switch to the Excel tab to have a larger display of a single parameter. At the lower left is the main menu of the meter. Here, we can set up our measurement and our meter preferences. We will take a closer look at all the menu options later on in this training video. As we move along the bottom of the screen, we can click on the light bulb icon to access the different screen brightness settings. We can change the brightness on the meter to make it easier to see in dim situations or to preserve the battery. The question mark is the help section of the meter and is a very useful reference for information about the different settings and displayed parameters on the meter. The power icon will show us if the battery is plugged into an external power source or how much battery time is left calculated from the current power consumption. For example, the screen brightness that we have selected will have an effect on the time remaining for the battery. We can recalibrate the battery by draining it all the way to zero and then fully charging it again. At the lower right, we find the time of the meter. The timestamp will be saved with the measurement for later reference. Let's start a quick measurement. I can start a measurement by pressing the play pause button on the meter. Near the top of the screen, we can see the duration of the measurement. And below that, we can see the displayed results. All selected parameters are being measured all the time on the meter, whether or not they are being displayed during the measurement. All the parameters that are available on the meter will be available for download later in the measurement partner suite software. So we don't have to worry about what we have displayed on the meter because all of the measured results will be available later. If I stop the measurement and want to save it, I can click on the Save button to the right of the Play Pause button. Notice that before I save the measurement, the indication light around the Play Pause button will blink quickly to indicate that the measurement has been made but has not yet been saved. Also notice that the name of the measurement will have an asterisk next to it because it has not been saved. Once I save the measurement, the asterisk goes away and we're ready to take another measurement. Notice that the light around the play pause button is no longer blinking quickly and instead is blinking slowly to indicate that it's ready for a new measurement. If we start another measurement, the meter will automatically rename the new measurement. In this case, it's called Project 002. And notice that the new measurement name has an asterisk next to it 
to indicate that it hasn't yet been saved. Next, let's take a look at the menu options in more detail. We can access the main menu by clicking on the icon at the lower left of the screen. The first option at the top, Lock Keys and Screen, will allow us to lock out the control keys and screen interface so we cannot accidentally make any changes or stop the measurement. The next option in the menu is the Template Explorer. The Template Explorer will open the list of all the templates that are available on the meter. Each application on the meter can have multiple templates, and we can create and save custom templates that are set up to perform specific measurements. In another training video, we will go through how to set up custom templates on the meter. The next option in the main menu is the timer setup. The timer setup will allow us to set up timers to open and start a specific template at a specific date and time. This can be used to automate the start of various measurements. For record keeping, we can add a note to our current measurement if we click on Add Note to Current Measurement. We can also add an image to the current measurement on the 2270, or we can make a record of the meter's GPS location if we have a GPS receiver plugged into the meter. If we'd like to calibrate the meter, we can click on Calibration to perform the calibration of a microphone or accelerometer that is plugged into the meter. We'll review how to perform a calibration in another training video. The transducers list shows us the different types of transducers that have been added to the meter. The transducer that is currently selected is shown at the top right. The type of the transducer and its serial number are displayed. It also shows us that it is selected to be used in the top socket of the meter and as the channel 1 input. We'll take a look at how to create new transducers on the meter in another training video. We can set up a variety of things on the meter under the Preferences menu. At the top, there are a number of display settings. For example, there are multiple display settings for optimized color schemes that allow the screen to be easily read outdoors, indoors, and at night. We can also turn on a backlight behind the control buttons on the meter. The power settings are where we can select how quickly to dim the screen backlight and put the meter into standby mode when it isn't being actively used. These settings can help extend the battery life. The external power selection will allow us to choose whether or not the meter will turn on automatically when external power is applied. Under Regional Settings, we can select our time zone, what date format we would like to use on the meter, as well as what type of unit we would like to use for different parameters. For example, if we're measuring vibration with an accelerometer, we can select between SI and US UK units to look at values in either meters per second squared or G's. Under Storage Settings, we can define how our measurements are named. When we select to auto-name projects, the name of the project will now be the date of the measurement, followed by a numerical suffix. If we take a look at the measurement name, we'll see that it has today's date and the numerical suffix 001. If we make another measurement, it will automatically be called 002. If we select No to auto-name projects, the project name can be whatever we want. By default, measurements are named Project.
Under headphone settings, we can select whether or not we'd like to listen to the microphone or accelerometer signal at the earphone connector on the bottom of the meter. We can also apply some gain to this output. We can set up multiple users on the meter. For example, we could have different settings and templates for different user logins on the meter. We can connect the meter directly to a printer. Under printer settings, we can select the margins, as well as what type of printer we are connected to. We can set up the meter to connect to a modem or ethernet network, so we can access it remotely. Under network settings, we can configure the meter to be used on the network. I have a wireless SD card in my meter, so I could use that as the network connection. We could also connect directly to the Ethernet port on the bottom of the meter. If we're connected to a network, we can have the meter send out notifications, such as the daily status of the meter, if the meter battery has reached a critically low level, if the meter is running out of disk space, or if a specific sound level has been exceeded. These notifications can be very useful for remote monitoring applications. We can send out these alerts via email or SMS message. If we're connected to a network, we can also allow remote access to the meter by enabling the web server. We can select whether we will require the user to log in through the Measurement Partner Suite software, BZ5503, and what the user name and password will be to access the meter. The guest login will allow someone to log in to view the meter remotely without being able to control it. The NMT server settings are for a specific noise monitoring application for automatically streaming data from the meter. This application and service can provide automated reporting and data management. The image settings allow us to select whether we can take a picture on the 2270 by just pushing the manual event button or if we must first open the viewfinder. Next, let's take a look at the setup options. The setup options are where we can select our transducer and measurement settings. Under input, we can look at what channel and input we are using. For example, we can select between the top and rear socket and select what transducer is selected to be used. We can apply a sound field correction, whether we're in a free field or diffuse field. We can tell the meter to use the automatic windscreen detection. If we're not using the windscreen auto detection, we can manually apply a windscreen correction. The UA1650 is the standard windscreen that comes with the meter. The UA1404 is the outdoor windscreen for permanent or semi-permanent microphone installations. Under trigger input, we can select what is connected to the trigger input connector. The matron hand switch and voltage level can be used to control the start and stop of signal recording. When we select voltage level, anything over a 2 volt input will start the signal recorder, and when it drops below 1 volt, the recording will stop. The voltage for monitoring setting is for monitoring the voltage at the trigger input, which can be used together with the notifications from the preferences menu. Next, we can select the frequency settings for the measurement. We can select two weightings to be measured at once for the broadband or overall RMS values. We can select A and Z, a and C, B and Z, or B and C to be measured at the same time. The broadband peak detector can have its own frequency weighting, 
but only one can be used at a time for a measurement. The default weighting is the C weighting, which is common for impulsive noise testing, but we could also select an A or Z weighting instead. We can measure a number of statistical parameters, and a number of them are already selected to be measured by default. If we'd like to measure a different percentile, we can do so by clicking on one of the percentiles and changing its value. Measurement control will allow us to select manual or automatic modes as we looked at earlier. When we select automatic, we can define a specific measurement duration time. The time is written as seconds, minutes, and hours. The T values are for the moving LAEQ. These will give us a rolling 15 minute A weighted average. It allows us to find the loudest 15 minute portion of any measurement. We can change the time if we want to use something other than 15 minutes. For example, we could select 5 minutes. There are two selections here because we could have two of these rolling averages running in parallel with each having their own time interval. We can make wave recordings of the measurement under signal recording. In another training video, we'll discuss making signal recordings in more detail. Under Output Socket Signal, we can select what comes out of the rear output connection on the meter. We can output a direct or frequency weighted signal from the microphone or accelerometer, or a DC voltage that is proportional to the LAF value, or a constant voltage for calibration. If we're making an OSHA or Occupational Health Assessment, we can select Occupational Health and select our times, threshold level, and other parameters to be used in the Occupational Health calculations. The last item on the main menu is the Explorer. The Explorer will allow us to look at and select any measurement that has been saved on the meter. Project 001 is the measurement we made just a few minutes ago. If we want to look at it, we can click on it and select Open. Since we have made changes in the current measurement setup, the meter will ask us if we want to save those changes to the template before we open the saved measurement. All the results from that saved measurement are available for us to look at. That's a quick overview of how to set up and control the 2250 and 2270 sound level meters. We're now ready to go out and make some measurements and save them to the meter. In the next training videos, we'll review how to set up new transducers to be used with the meter, as well as how to perform calibrations.